Um, uh, <laughs> I, I haven't uploaded since uh, more than a, more than a year now, and um, so I'm, I'm sorry about that. But um, let's let's look at uh, uh, something called an electric dipole here. And what an electric dipole is basically um, uh, a combination of two opposite charges. And what I mean by that is we have a plus Q here and similarly a minus Q here. Note that these are two opposing charges while uh, one is a positive charge, the other is negative. And uh, usually, usually they are both of the same magnitude. Um, and uh, there's, there's not, nothing more about uh, the definition of a dipole. That's what it is. And let's say they are a distance d apart. That's that's pretty much it. But uh, what you try to find uh, in cases like this is uh, at at a certain point p, let's say, at a distance of r from the <coughs> the midpoint. Of, of the line joining the two charges and uh, from from that point at a distance r we have a point p and uh, we would like to find this, um, you know the electric field at that point the electric potential etc etc and what we usually assume uh, uh, while solving problems in uh, regarding dipoles is that d is much much less than r and uh, it's not as if uh, if this is this is not the case, then this won't call be a, uh, will not be a, uh, called a dipole. Uh, it's just that uh, it makes calculations a, a lot more easier. Uh, so that's why we assume that. And um, uh, the way we proceed here is uh, let's say we want to, we want to find the well. Let's go for the easier easier part first. We'll find the potential. Let's um, write that down. Potential. Uh, we want to find the potential at point P due to both these charges, uh, Q1, uh, plus Q and minus Q. So uh, what we do is uh, a bit of geometry here and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a perpendicular from this point right here and um, what, what I'll do is extend this a bit so that I can you know, dro drop a perpendicular from this point. Just Draw it really nicely here. Okay, uh, so that's a perpendicular right there, and that's a perpendicular right there. And uh, let's let's uh, assume a few value, values here. That uh, this 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 uh, this angle here is let's say theta, and uh, you know from basic geometry this will also be theta. And since this is the midpoint, this distance right here will be d by two. But I don't need to write that. I think uh, anyway. So, um, let, let me erase that uh, potential word. It's quite distracting. So, uh, we'll, we'll find the potential. And the way we will do that is just, you know, what, what we've learned so far. So, let me keep that image right there and uh, look here. Uh, we know that potential is denoted by V. So, what we simply do is, um, add the potential due to this charge the plus q at the point p and we'll add that potential to the potential due to the negative charge or uh, shall i say minus q at the, at the same point p so let's do the plus q first the potential due to the plus q charge at point p will be k where k let me change the color here uh, k q where k is uh, in, in case you have forgotten, k is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. Oops, epsilon naught. And uh, we'll leave that right there. there. Uh, it's kq over the distance of the charge from that point. And what we need is this distance right here. And we'll, we'll find that distance by, well, well uh, let's use a, a bit of geometry here. Uh, we can see that uh, this distance is uh, very close to this distance here and it, while it doesn't look like that, uh, I'm saying that because uh, we assumed in the beginning, uh, let me write that down as well, why did I erase that? D is much much less than R. 
So you can imagine these two charges being very close, very, very close, and this point P being very far away. So you can kind of get that this distance will be kind of same to this distance, you know. There won't be much of a difference. So this distance, we'll just write this distance. And that distance is easier to calculate since it's just R, R is this distance. And we subtract from that this distance, which is simply uh, d by 2, which is that distance, times the cosine of theta or the cos theta. So the denom denominator is simply, uh, let me make that bigger uh, right there. Okay, so that is r minus d by 2 cos theta. So that, that r, r minus d by 2 cos theta is this distance. But we assume that to be this distance since we assume that d is much, much less than r. And similarly, we'll go for the negative charge as well. So that will be k times q, but since it's negative, so I'll put a minus q there over and, and in similar fashion, you can see that this distance, we need this distance, right? This distance, but we'll replace that with this distance. And that distance is again easier to calculate since it will be just r which is this distance plus this distance so it will be r plus now this distance is simply d by 2 again times the cosine of theta okay so we've reached kind of a intermediate stage right now yeah okay so v is well, I'll use a brighter color here. Let's say a little right there. Okay. So um, V is simply KQ. Well, I, uh, I'll write that down anyway. R minus D by 2 cos theta. And uh, if you notice carefully, we'll bring that minus right down there. So that's minus KQ over R plus D by 2 cos theta. Okay, now comes the uh, the mathematical part, I guess you could say. And here we're gonna use the fact that D is much, much less than R, but not quite right now, so we'll just proceed here. Uh, we'll simply cross multiply this, this, uh, you know, you know the method. So um, uh, I'll just do this real quick here, R plus D by two cos theta minus kq r minus d by 2 cos theta over okay this is getting bigger and bigger and uh, if you notice we have a minus b times a plus b which is a squared minus b squared if you know your math so that's r squared minus d squared over 4 cosine squared of theta Okay, so let me change the color once again. So V is, okay, so that's KQ times, uh, you can notice that KQR will get canceled off right here. And uh, KQ times D by 2 cos theta will be added twice. So that will be uh, simply D cos theta, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, that seems fine divided by r squared minus d squared over 4 cosine squared of theta. Okay, now comes the part where we use that approximation. We know that r is much, much, oops, d is much, much less than r. Sorry about that. So if you notice that r is very, very big here and we are squaring that as well and d is very, very small and we are squaring that again. So the difference between these two numbers is going to get real big you know this is going to be much much bigger than this so we can just completely ignore that term uh, in order to make our calculations a little bit simpler so we will be kq times d cos theta over we neglect that term right there so that will become r square okay now um we, uh, we can stop right here because that's pretty much our answer, but people, you know, like to 
get things even simpler for them so we'll just make a you know a definition which is uh, quite common in in, uh, in a standard physics textbook so uh, the the definition is something called the dipole moment I'll write that down and we denote that with the letter, letter, letter P and I'll write that down di pole moment and that is defined by um, it is simply uh, the charge multi multiplied by d uh, that that's kind of the definition well, there's there's not much uh, you know not much logic here but it's simply you know to make make things easier um for for ourselves so um let me just check everything once again and we seem to be going in the right track okay so um if we use that definition which we made just right now that p is defined to be q times d and if you do that then you can see that we have a q times d here so we can replace that with p so that that will become kp cosine theta or cos theta over r squared and this is um the stage where most of the people end the the proof well not quite the proof uh, we can say the derivation of the potential uh, due to a dipole uh, at a point P which is which is at a distance R from the midpoint of the line joining the dipoles and um, we use that approximation right there so yeah uh, that's that's pretty much it and uh, in in the next episode we'll um, oh, not the episode but <laughs> In the next movie, we'll uh, we'll discuss uh, how to find the electric field at point P. And um, yeah, I hope you like it. And uh, yeah.